With the 15th anniversary of Minecraft and its recent 1.21 update, I've seen a wave of new players, many of them adults, joining the community to discover how a ragtag indie game had the staying power to become a decade and a half global phenomenon. But for all its charm and potential, the same sandbox style that grants it such appeal can also be a double-edged sword, with a huge learning curve for an inexperienced player. If that's you, you're in the right place, and welcome to Minecraft Caves Notes. The goal of this series is to create a library of easy-to-digest guides for understanding the basics of the Minecraft world. Things like how monsters spawn, what types of terrain and friendly creatures exist, types of movement and travel, and the physics of a world where stone stays put in midair and water can be replicated. Welcome back to Caves Notes. Last time we were here we talked about water and lava. But unfortunately, I had to uh, split this video for time, so let's get into the rest of it. So let me show you some of the things that you can use water and lava for. Maybe you found that spot that you want to build, but there's all this pesky tall grass in the way. Simply use a water bucket, clear it out. If you're very industrious, you can even set up contraptions that will move items around for you using water. Smaller aquatic animals, like fish, axolotl, and even tadpoles can be picked up with the water bucket. Just keep in mind that to pick up aquatic mobs in uh, water buckets, the bucket that you use must already have water in it. It won't work with an empty, empty bucket, you must already have a bucket of water. And then aim at the animal and click use to pick it up. And then likewise, you can aim at a uh, block underwater that uh, you want to place down on and click the use button to drop it back off again. Or let's say that you're playing and, and you want to store your valuables, but you've been having some trouble with creepers. Placing a chest down in water, or taking a water bucket and either clicking the use button on the side of a, the block that the chest is in, or holding sneak and placing it on the chest, will waterlog the chest. The chest will still be usable, even underwater, but if a creeper attempts to blow it up, the chest will survive. Likewise, if a creeper actually explodes in water, then it won't damage any of the surrounding blocks. Endermen also hate water, so if you do accidentally anger one, pop some water down at your feet, at least if you're in a roughly level area, and you may just save your life. If you can make it to a coastline, you can actually just stand at the shore uh, in the water, and as long as you're at least a block away from the edge, you should be able to take on the Enderman no problem. Water also affects mobs pathfinding. So if you're being harassed at night, placing down some water might allow you the time you need to escape. What about using water for home defense? Even a single uh, two block deep hole with some water in it will keep zombies, skeletons, and creepers from reaching your house. And if a creeper does manage to get in, as long as its feet are in the water when it's, it explodes, it will not damage your blocks. There are much better variations of, of this kind of moat, but this is just the simplest way to illustrate how water can be used for home defense. Water can be used to save yourself from lava, as well as putting out yourself if you're on fire, or putting out fires themselves if they form. Perhaps one of the most useful ways to use water is actually for vertical movement, and it's certainly my favorite way. 
let's say you need to get down from a high, high cliff like this one. We can look for natural water sources. It appears that we don't have anything, uh, nope, nothing reasonable. So, by simply placing a, a bucket of water on a block near you, you can let the water flow down. And you don't even need to let it flow all the way down. But pick it back up and drop yourself into the flow. And you can ride it down as far as you need to. And you've gotten safely down dozens or sometimes even hundreds of blocks without taking any damage and relatively quickly. Now one interesting thing about water in Minecraft is it takes very little to actually negate fall damage. So you may get used to seeing players do something like this. By placing water at your feet right before you land, you can effectively uh, drop quite a distance and take no damage. Just keep in mind that this trick does not work as well on Bedrock because of its death animation screen that switches your viewpoint before you actually hit the ground. The farther you fall, the faster you fall. So higher distances can be difficult even for somewhat experienced players. Water isn't just good for getting down quickly and easily, it's also useful for traveling up without needing to break or place blocks. Simply reach as high as you can, place your water, and then you can swim up it. And you can collect the water once you're done. With a little bit of practice, you could even scale impossible cliffs using water like this. After you've placed your first water and you swim up it, when you are rising, pick the water up and then immediately place it a block or two higher. If you decide to do some underwater exploring and you find yourself low on air, you can place and fill your bucket repeatedly to get your air back. Use the use button to fill and empty your bucket over your head and you'll be able to regenerate your water or your air. And of course with this trick you could pretty much explore underwater indefinitely. So what about lava? What can we use this for? Well for starters by uh, pure capacity, lava is actually the best fuel in the game. It's not the most efficient because without a hopper system feeding into the furnace you won't actually get the whole use out of it. That's because you can only place up to a stack of items in the furnace at a time which is 64 items at most whereas a bucket of lava is capable of smelting 100 items. So in order to get its full use you would need to be able to continually feed items into the furnace. Now this is possible, but in the early game you may not want to use lava as fuel. But when you get to a point where you have a system for it and a renewable source of it, it can be one of the best fuels in the game. Lava can actually be used as a decorative light source, as it provides the highest possible light level that the game allows. Just be careful when you're doing this because if you don't have it covered properly and it's within three blocks of any flammable block like wooden items, it may be able to set them on fire. Uh, clearly that's what happened here. I lost some of my house due to putting the lava too close. However, if I had spaced this a little bit further away from the house, then you might see how a lava moat can also be useful for keeping mobs out of your house. Come on guys, come get in the lava, come get in the lava. 
mobs will try to avoid lava when pathfinding the same way they would with flowing water. But when they bunch up enough, they may be able to push each other in. Lava may also be able to be used as an offensive weapon in some situations, although this is definitely situational and helps if you have the high ground. Otherwise, the slow speed of lava makes it easy enough for mobs to avoid. However, it is still possible. Remember, you can place a liquid and then immediately pick it back up. Therefore, lighting mobs on fire and dealing damage at the same time. This method would certainly take some practice, but can be incredibly useful in certain situations. Lava is also a common killing mechanism or trap in certain mob farms, such as this iron farm. Another situation that may not be as common, but is important to know about, is that arrows shot through lava will become flaming arrows and will light their target on fire. Just be careful, because this works both ways, and if you're fighting something like pillagers or skeletons and their arrows go through lava, they can set you on fire as well. It's not just enemies that are susceptible to lava either. In the early game, you may find that one easy way to cook food is to just skip the extra furnace step. Animals that die when they are on fire will drop the cooked version of their meat instead of just the raw version. If you have built yourself a nether portal, the normal way of lighting it would be with flint and steel, because the way the portal works is it activates whenever fire is placed on one of the inside faces of the blocks, like so. But what if you didn't have flint and steel? Well, one other method is actually to place lava on one side of the portal and some flammable block on the other side next to the open spaces. Because there is a chance that these wooden blocks light on fire on this side within the portal, as soon as that happens, the portal itself will automatically light. Oh, wow, <laughs> that was really good timing. Uh, it does normally take longer than that. I thought that I was going to have to cut this clip down, but I guess the, the game was, was just aware that we were filming some cave notes and thought it might help us out. So with all that goodness, you'd think we'd be about done, right? But there's actually a couple of more things that can go in a bucket. One of those is powdered... Hello. One... Can you leave me alone, please? I'm trying to film a video here. Excuse me. I'm kind of busy. Thank you. So one of those two things is actually powder, powdered snow. Looking carefully at the texture, there's a bit more of a snowflake texture on the top of powdered snow. It is not easy to see. But if you do uh, step on this block, you will sink into it. And if you're not wearing leather, you'll take damage. But with a bucket, you can click the Use button and you can actually collect some of it. And then you can place it down and recollect it pretty much wherever you need it. Now, why is this useful? Well, if you have leather boots on, you can actually walk on powdered snow. And you can press the Sneak button to go down into it the same way as you would with scaffolding and you won't take damage from powder snow if you are wearing leather. So, so what do we do with that? Well first let me bring up something that I forgot to mention earlier. And let's take our leather boots back off and say that we accidentally start sinking into this snow and we're freezing. Placing down water will clear the powder snow around us. It's one of the quickest ways to save yourself if you do find yourself stuck in powdered snow. You can also just place it down on the side of the hill and it will start clearing out any powdered snow within its path. 
This can be incredibly handy for navigating this terrain as it tends to be very, very dangerous for newer players. Now that we have powdered snow, we can use this in some similar ways to water, such as being able to climb up areas that we might otherwise not be able to reach. Also, if we choose not to wear our, our leather boots, we can actually use powder snow the same way we would water to break our fall. The place where this can come in very, very helpful is actually in the game's nether dimension, where water can't be placed at all. But in a weird twist, snow and ice can. Similar to catching lava in a cauldron using dripstone, both rain and snow can actually be collected in the cauldron in the appropriate places simply by leaving it out under the open sky. Snowy biomes have the chance to fill up the cauldron with powder snow, while normal biomes, those that rain, have a chance to fill up the cauldron with water. Like the lava, this is typically a lengthy process. It's not worth sitting and watching. And one more thing you can use a bucket for. If you click the use button on a cow, you'll get milk. Hold the use button to drink it. Unlike food, it's not going to restore any uh, health, and you can recollect from a cow as many times as you want. But what milk is good for is for clearing status effects. Like if, for example, I was poisoned by a witch. Well, that didn't last very long. Hit me. Hit me with poison. Drinking the milk will clear the status effect. And with that, we're going to call this one a wrap. I hope you learned something about water and lava today. And I hope you now know why I think the bucket is so amazing and why you should carry one with you and learn how to use it because it may just save your life. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. After you've placed your first water and you swim up it, when you are rising, pick the water up and then immediately place it a block or two higher. Okay, so that one might be a little bit too advanced for this series. Um, and I know I said I wouldn't really do that. But I do want you to be aware that it is possible and understand why water buckets are literally your best friend.